Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to make another how to self learn type video. The last one I made was about economics that you, you can find in, in the description below. But today I wanted to delve into something more abstract. Some people would say, some people would say more concrete, but <laughs> let's not get into that debate. What we're talking about today is psychology and self learning psychology. So first of all, what is psychology? I find psychology to be best defined as the study of the human behavior and the human emotion and the human behavior and how all of those different aspects are structured together and how they affect each other. Um, Jordan Peterson notes, uh, a doctor of psychology from Canada, notes that psychology is the science of integrating between the li different levels of existence of the individual. So each of us exists on the level of the atom, on the level of the molecule, on the level of the organ, on the level of the body, of the brain, of the society, etc. And so psychology tries to integrate between all of those different levels of existence to find the optimal way of being, in a way. But what, what makes psychology so important and what makes it so interesting to study is the way that it allows us to behave better in the actual real world. So that's the more concrete side of psychology because for me, for example, I work as a leader and as a salesperson. And in both of those roles, it's crucial for me to be able to understand how people work, understand the different motivation structures and the ways in which dopamine systems, for example, work so that I can optimize my behavior to match their behavior and thus create a solution and an end that is better than the alternative. So that's why I find the study of psychology to be so important because it helps us affect all of those different domains. As a lot of you know, there are a lot of domains of psychology. There are a lot of different sub-disciplines within the discipline of psychology. There's forensic psychology, there's counseling, there is sports psychology, developmental psychology, there is behavioral psychology, there is evolutionary psychology. There are lots of different kinds of psychologies and sub-disciplines within that discipline. So the first question is, where to start. There is so much stuff to uncover uh, within psychology. It's, it might be difficult to know where, where to start. So the starting point for me has always been psychology of personality and also neuropsychology. And I find that those two, however unprofessional and, and unstudied my opinion may be, I find that those two are the most interesting starting points, if not the easiest. Um, and they're also the most applicable to real world scenarios. So for example, understanding the psychology of personality, for example, the big five model, understanding that helps me categorize different individuals and find co corollaries between different behaviors that they might uh, exhibit. If one person is really worried, all the time about different things that might happen. I might know that they're um, higher in neuro neuroticism than the average person, and that might affect the way I lead them uh, to be more tailored toward their person personality, and I might be better able to help them uh, cope with, with some common problems that highly neurotic people have, for example. So that basic framework is very helpful and then that that's from personality psychology and then from the neuropsychology side um, I find that understanding dopamine structures for example the, the different dopaminergic pathways within the brain is very useful because understanding how gamification works for example gamification is just optimization of the dopaminergic function within the brain so gamification is about taking a situation where you sacrifice the present and present comfort, for example, for a better future. So you are bargaining with the future you. In that kind of situation, gamification helps by introducing an element of immediate satisfaction to that equation, which then helps make the 
behavior that's good in the long term, more pleasurable in the present as well, and thus increases the likelihood of that. And you see this within Duolingo, for example. So those are the different psychologies, two different psychologies that I really like to start with and that I've studied. And I want to point you to some resources. That's where these, these little guys come in as to what I've read to um, help me understand uh, these different disciplines of psychology. Um, first of all, let's delve into neuropsychology. There is a book called Behave by Mr. Robert M. Sapolsky. And this book um, is about, it tries to answer the question of why we engage in good behaviors and especially why we engage in bad behaviors. It's quite a long book. It doesn't look that thick because the paper is very thin, but it is, let's see, about 700 pages and it's very, very technical. So this isn't your easy average Sunday read, rather it is a very um, demanding book that really takes some, take some looking at. Um, one problem that I have with this book is that it is very clearly uh, politically influenced, uh, especially by the leftist political tradition, which isn't something that I personally subscribe to. But knowing that um, bias and trying to take that, take that into account before uh, embarking on, on the journey of reading this, uh, this mammoth um, is a good thing. And also, I don't really see the reason why in a highly technical scientific book you'd like to introduce poly political bias, especially as clearly as the author does. So that's the main issue that I have with this book. But other than that, it's a very good um, functional introduction in the neuropsychology. Another book that I wanted to mention is a more popular book which is Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. And this is a very popular book, but it is a highly problematic book as well. So if you decide to read this book, I suggest to proceed with very, very vigilant mindset. Because this book, first of all, it is subject to the replication crisis, which if you don't know what that is, you should look it up. Second of all, it has been proven that some of the conclusions that Kahneman drives from the different sources that he uses are actually directly contrary to what those original sources conclude. So in other words, there are fully false pieces of information within this book. It's also somewhat annoying to read in that it's introduces examples of ways we think illogically in a way that's a bit pretentious. <laughs> but again, if you keep those in mind and prepare for such instances when, when reading this book, you can get through it and there's a lot of good things about this book as well. And it um, introduces the different levels of cognitive function uh, in an interesting and compelling way. So that's uh, as it pertains to neuropsychology, um, I wanted to introduce one more resource, uh, more on the personality psychology side. And this is Nick Haslam's and Luke Smilly's um, An Introduction to Personality, Individual Differences and Intelligence, um, the third edition specifically. And this is a school textbook. So this is not a <laughs> fun, easy Sunday read either, but there are uh, fun jabs in here as well. But the most important thing about this is that it has a very wide coverage. So it covers uh, trade psychology, which is big five and theories like that, which is very interesting and crucial. But it also covers the nature and nurture aspects of genetic uh, psychology. For example, it, it talks about genetics in general, which is also very interesting. And in general, it's a very good introduction to the whole discipline of, of personality psychology. So definitely recommend that textbook. 
uh, as a resource. And then since psychology is a science, as economics is obviously as well, um, there are also scientific papers that you can read uh, to increase your competence within the subject as, subject as well. And there are obviously paid uh, scientific articles, which, you know, the culture of the government paying scientists to publish papers that are then not dispersed to the public for free. That's questionable. But then again, <laughs> you can access some of these papers uh, for free as well. And I wanted to highlight a couple of different papers that I've read that I find uh, enlightening. The first is a new big five fundamental principles for an integrative science of personality by McAdams and Pals, which goes into an integrative science of personality because in that field, uh, there's the issue of uh, having a lot of different theories and ideas that are not functioning together. So they exist within silos, which is not beneficial. Um, so this paper uh, tries to integrate all of those disciplines into one and it's, it's quite a successful paper as well, published in 2006. Um, then there's um, the behavioral genetics of personality development in adulthood, classic contemporary and future trends, which uh, looks more into the genetic side of things, obviously. So that's a very interesting paper. And then there is a research review uh, by, okay, I'm not gonna even try to pronounce those names, I'll put them in the in the description, but there's the research review, uh, do parent ratings of infant negative emotionality and self-regulation predict psychopathology in childhood and adolescence, which is a meta-analysis which looks at a lot of different studies and drives conclusions from a whole bunch of different studies. Those are some papers that I've read and it's useful to be able to read scientific papers um, in itself, which is one reason why I recommend reading papers such as that, but also um, understanding the way in which um, scientific conclusions are derived is also uh, a very useful skill because it allows you to analyze more critically and think more deeply about scientific books you read and also it enables you to go into the primary sources of those books and drive your own conclusions from there as well. So it essentially helps you be a better critical thinker as well. So those are some resources and some ideas I have about uh, going about the act of self-learning psychology. I hope this video helps. Again, if you want to check out the economic side uh, of things, you can find that video in the description below. And uh, other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.